start by saying and spelling your name and then um, just tell me what you're running for and why. Yeah, so my name is Caitlin Clark. That is spelled K-A-I-T-L-Y-N and Clark, C-L-A-R-K. Um, I'm going to be running for the Ohio House Representative District 72. Um, I live in Coshocton County and born and raised, so very proud to be from there. Um, and I'm really running because I think a lot of people in my community feel frustrated and fearful, especially given the coronavirus. And I feel that our representation and our leadership needs to step up. Um, I know of a lot of people who do great work in our communities at a local level, but I also understand how hard it is to communicate at the state level, especially over the past few years. Um, given the kind of recent arrests of Larry Householder and different uh, confusions that go along with this type of scenario, I think that we need a better choice. Like, we need more people in our community to be able to step up, and we need a better person to be able to advocate for us um, and speak for our needs. Um, and that's really what I want to do, because I genuinely care about my community, and I don't want to see them go unheard and unrepresented in our state government. What was your reaction to to his arrest? Um, and what, what was your community's reaction, I guess, too? Yeah, my personal reaction was a surprise. I mean, I've met Larry Householder a couple times. Um, I think he has done a fairly good job of representing us and of speaking to our needs and meeting with people in our community. Um, but obviously, innocent to proven guilty, I truly believe that to my core. Um, that's how our law system works. But I don't think that you can have anybody with a questionable character inside for representation for our state government. Um, and I, I was just surprised. I think that uh, it, it is always surprised when the Speaker of the House, when somebody you trust is representing you and then it's questionable, you know, they get arrested. The federal government has an investigation. Um, and I would love to things, see things turn out great for him and that it's not true or things uh, were unclear in those certain situations. but. I just, I question it. And I think questioning is hard. And I think my community's reaction was also shock um, and a lot of frustration. Uh, you just don't want to see something, it's like your only line of communication to your government in a way where they speak directly to your needs and then they're not there. They, they aren't there for you when you need them. So I just think shock and frustration is mainly it. Why should someone pick you to uh, be his replacement? I understand you feeling like um, he obviously does need to be replaced, but, but why are you the right person um, to take over? Yeah, so I think I bring a lot to the table. I've had a lot of experience in economic development inside my county and inside our region. Um, and I try to present myself and bring what I bring to the table as a solid person. And I want to listen. I want to understand what our community needs and then work with them towards solutions because you can't truly understand a problem. You can't truly fix a problem unless you understand what the problem is. Um, and so I feel that I bring to the table this kind of strength and idealism because I think we can change. And I think in a time of fear and unrest that we need to be working together. We need to be banding together and talking to each other and working as the communities that we are. Um, so I really think that I represent the strong, conservative, like independent idealism that my community brings to the table. And, uh, you know, you're obviously very young. Is that something that you think uh, works to your advantage? Does it work to your disadvantage? You know, uh, what are your overall thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't think being young is a disadvantage at all. I think it's totally an advantage in my core and for my community. I mean, I grew up in the age of technology. I know how online virtual platforms work, and especially when we're forced to work in these types of situations. Like, I want to be able to problem solve, and I have grown up with a dedication to always work towards a solution. Like, I'm never going to give up until it's definitely the end. Like, that's just not something that I ever have believed in, is giving up and going easy on it. Um, and so I think just my vigor of youth, some may call it, is an important asset for people to have, and especially knowing what the climate of today is. I think it's hard for people to get stuck in what their opinions are, but also seeing the problem and seeing the solutions, and not necessarily from a point of view that is uh, almost not necessarily jaded. I don't want to say jaded, but I want to say uh, 
focused on something specific that you've always had to work after, but the problem is different now. So I want to see that idealism change the world and I want to be able to work and move forward. If you were to be voted in, how would you make sure that your community feels comfortable with their representation when obviously uh, there's been uh, a lot of alleged corruption going on with their specific representative? Yeah, I think that's a tough thing. And I think being held accountable is an important thing. Having those communication lines open and always being available to the communities and being honest and truthful. I, I don't ever want to stand up in front of somebody and tell them, oh, no, that's not definitely not going to happen. Like, uh, I want to be the person who's always going to tell you the truth and who's always going to tell you the facts, no matter if it's a hard thing to talk about. Um, and I think having people to be able to come up beside me, I mean, I live in a community and I'm not going to the state house alone. This is my community working together. I have people behind me who are ready and willing to step up and understand and lead. And I want to open those lines of communication for everybody in these communities. Would you like to see Larry Householder step down? Obviously, many of his colleagues are calling for him to give up his seat um, and not go through with this election. Is that something that you believe that he should do? I think that's a hard question to answer. And I don't know that I really have a personal opinion on that type of thing. I think that's his decision. If he feels that he can lead our district in a confident and respectable manner, then I think he should go for it. I think that's what our elected system is meant to do. Uh, I think if, if he's truly innocent, then he should, he should try to represent us. He's done a fairly good job of it over the years. Um, however, if, if truly he understands that he's going to be charged with these crimes, if he feels he cannot bring quality representation to the table, then he should step down. But I can't say that uh, if an innocent man who can represent us in a great way should step down. I would never encourage that. Whether it's you or, or someone else who ends up representing the 72nd district, uh, what do you think is the most important thing that the community needs right now? I think the community needs someone who is going to listen. I think it's hard for state representatives sometimes to be able to, like, you come back and you do a visit with somebody, you talk with somebody on the phone, but you need to listen to every side, not just your political perspective, not just your own opinions. You need to really be in your community. You really need to understand what they need, what's happening, be involved and immersed in what is going on in, in our district. And uh, if, if you were put in office, what are, what are some of the main uh, key points that you would like to take care of? Uh, I read somewhere that broadband was a big issue for you. What are, what are these, uh, your priorities? Yeah, so definitely broadband. That's one of my biggest things. I, I actually live in a place where I barely have cell phone service at my house. And I think anybody who is put at that disadvantage has a hard time in education, especially in virtual platforms, in business, trying to communicate with people across our state, across our nation, or even across the street. I think that just puts our region at a huge disadvantage, and that's something that rural communities truly need. Um, I would also say... Uh, Governmental communication. I definitely want to put in place things that you can really talk to your government. You can talk to your officials. You can talk to your legislators and be heard, feel heard, understood, those types of things. So I definitely want to find a way that you can open those paths of communication and keep your representatives accountable to the communities. Uh, and then third, I would say uh, COVID response. Honestly, I, I think this, we live in a really hard time but I also think there are ways that we can do better. We can work harder at being better for our communities. And I think that's in communication on COVID. That's in understanding what these communities truly need. And so our response as a people, as a government, as a nation, I think could be better. Not that they're bad, but they could be better. And um, I'm sorry, these are going to be kind of silly questions, but just to make sure I'm clear, I understand that you're, you're going to be a write-in candidate. Right, um, correct. But do you have a party that you identify with more? I, what would you identify yourself as? Yeah, I would identify myself as a Republican. Um, I truly hold conservative values, and I think that's something that my community has really invested in me with. Um, so I would definitely say Republican, yeah. Sorry, it's getting a little bit loud in here, but um, I guess my final question would be, if for some reason you don't take office, will you run again? Is this something that you plan to do in the future? 
that's definitely something I would consider. I can't say that uh, this is what I always want. I actually, I want to work in our capital someday. I want to work internationally. Um, I am on the verge of obtaining my degree in international relations. Um, but I truly think that I want to work to help people wherever I go. And if that means representing my district in the future, then that could be a definite possibility.